Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, welcome, everybody. I would like to start by thanking uh, King Abdelaziz City for Science and Technology for giving me the opportunity uh, to be here and uh, contribute to the discussion of such an important topic, particularly from the point of its relevant relevance to, to the region. And uh, we've been talking, you know, free and open source software is all about change. And that reminds me of a story where there is a wise man who, who felt a little bit hungry and went to a restaurant and asked the vendor, you know, can you please give me a, a sandwich, a falafel or a shawarma or whatever. And the guy, you know, prepared a very nice sandwich for the guy and said, you know, here's your sandwich. So the wise man handed the vendor a hundred dollars bill and he, and he waited and waited for, 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 for their money, for, for his money. Oh, sorry, it's mine. <laughs> Thank you. And the vendor told him, sorry, what? And the wise man said, I'm waiting for my change. And the vendor says, sorry, my friend, change comes from within. So <laughs> I would like to talk, you know, as our thread of this like next 35, 40 minutes is um, challenges and opportunities, the world of free and open source software is full of these stories, full of stories of challenges that were turned into opportunities by, by some pioneers, people who wanted to impact change and move things forward. Unfortunately, most of these stories happened on the other side of the world. So I will start by just mentioning a handful of these stories, just highlighting their relevance and their impact, and then moving to our situation here in the region and highlight some of the challenges that we face in, in, in really adopting free and open source software and benefiting you know, as much as possible of, of what it affords, and think of how we can also start to create our own uh, success stories in converting challenges into opportunities. So probably the most you know, well-known, the, the, the most famous story is the story of the open source movement itself, free software to say, so that Richard doesn't uh, get offended. So uh, Richard Stallman, this guy, felt that he was facing a challenge, a challenge of commercial companies locking down uh, source code for applications that prevented what he says the ability of you to share the code, the knowledge with your neighbor to benefit, to change, to modify. And his response was you know, incredibly genius. He said, I will set out to change that by creating a counter movement. I will not, I will not just stand and, and, and do nothing. I will, I will create a counter movement by seeding a community where people can come and you know share code share knowledge share information and build on that so some years later linus torvalds picked up this idea and he was like a single guy in his bedroom bored but he was a software developer and and for those of us here in the audience who do software development we know what, what, what writing code means to a software developer. So, so he was like having really lots of fun in write, writing code, and he wanted, his, he wanted to build an operating system, and he decided to make it available under an open source, a free software license that the GPL that Richard created a few years earlier. And guess what? In like, that was in 1991. 19 years later, we have about 5,000 active contributors adding code to, uh, to the Linux kernel, improving it, and as David told us, like all this fascinating security that we can see in Linux, fascinating stability, is the result of the coordinated efforts of 5,000 developers who wrote 11 million lines of code, and that was by the end of 2009. So I will assume that this has increased a little bit since then. So 
the, the, these two stories are examples of you know, really significant challenges that were turned into fascinating opportunities by just like smart thinking and commitment to, to, to ideas. And now all what we enjoy, we gathered here today to talk about free and open source software in Riyadh. Well, would you imagine that like in 1984, 1985? So other, uh, I would like also to mention the story of, uh, of this guy. Who knows this guy? This is Alan Cox. And Alan Cox was one of the very early uh, developers of the Linux kernel. And we have some friends from Red Hat with us today who will be talking to us probably today or tomorrow. So when Red Hat went public, they gave, uh, they gave privileged access to shares to those who had code committed into the Linux kernel. And Alan Cox wa was one of them. Uh, so after the initial public offering of Red Hat, you know, these guys made, made some really good money. So when Alan, uh, Alan wanted to buy his first house, he, he lives in Wales in a, in a town called Swansea in the United Kingdom. So he went with his wife, and his wife is also a, a software developer who contributes code to the Linux kernel. They went and they found the, like the, their ideal, their dream house, and told the real estate agent, you know, that's fine. We want to buy this house. He said, okay, great. So he said, let's now start you know, to sort out your mortgage. And he said, no, 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 no. We are paying in cash. And that probably was one of the very, very few, you know, a software developer who, who is a geek, who has like a, this beard and, you know, you know the T-shirts with, with some nice tuxes in, uh, on the, on the T-shirt, paying in cash, that was, that was significant. But that's also an indicator of another success story, and here it's in, this, in the world of business, where a company came and said, you know, it's really cool what's happening in the free and open source uh, software world, but can, can we capitalize on that? Can we create value? Can we make money out of that? So Red Hat, in, in, in uh, August 1999, they went public. They had what they call in the, in the finance world the initial public offering, the IPO. And they started with a share price of $14. That's when the company went public. That was the first offering. In the same day, the share closed at $52. So that's almost like four times the initial price. So many opportunities, so many challenge, you know, stories where people came and said, I think we can do something on that. One I like in particular is the story of Mark Shuttleworth. Those of you who know uh, Mark Shuttleworth, he created the first uh, certificate authority for online, for online commerce and online security. It was called Thouty. And that was the only certificate authority outside the United States in South Africa. And VeriSign, the, the largest certificate authority in the world, actually acquired Thouting. And Mark became millionaire overnight. So he had lots of money. The first thing he did is to go to space. He went out there, looked like, had some fun, came back. And then he was thinking, like, I have some money now. What can I do with, with that? So at that time, the Linux world, the, the, the Linux operating system had a very big problem. People would say, you know, Linux is great, we love it, it's very stable, very secure, but let's keep it in, in the dorm, in, in, in the server room, because it's not user friendly. It needs geeks, you need to compile everything, you need to recompile everything. It's, it's so complex, it's not for end users. So let's keep people using all the other operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, on the desktop, and that's fine, we can use Linux on the back end. So he said, well, why don't we build an a Linux operating system that has a nice interface that is also easy to use? So he came up with the idea 